Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It is August the 7th, 2022. Let's talk welterweight boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I'm someone who believes that a rising tide lifts all boats, right? I think it's very important to um, keep track of not just the fighters, but the people who are making predictions on fights, and to congratulate someone who has made a bold call. Because understand, boxing is a sport where when a Virgil Ortiz fights a Michael McKinson, right? Ortiz is going off as a huge favorite. Right? McKinson only had two KOs going into the fight. So you really have to pick and choose how you're going to play the fight. You don't want to take the winner and then get 5% on your money. right? You want to look and find the prop that is mispriced, that's there for the taking. And you need to know the fighters well enough to figure out if the opponent can last a few rounds against a prohibitive favorite. Well, that's exactly what longtime boxing writer Graham Houston did. He has a uh, column that he writes for boxing-social.com, right? Again, it's boxing-social.com. He calls the article Betting Angle, and he looked at this fight, right? I was terrified by it. You know, I feel... Virgil Ortiz is secretariat. I understood Ortiz was out, but I didn't know enough about the opponent. Graham Houston did. And he pointed out to his readers that Virgil Ortiz in rounds 7 to 12 was going off at a minus 140. Right, folks? That's exactly what happened. Right? Virgil Ortiz was able to close the show in those rounds. The minus 140 was considerably better. I mean considerably better than just taking Ortiz straight up to win the fight. Right? In the comment section here to this video, leave your comments on the odds you got on this fight. Right? Let me also point out, too, that boxing-social.com is an excellent site. Uh, here online, some other sites that I admire and may not have mentioned you know i love boxingscene.com but boxingnews24.com i enjoy their work also cbs sports has a pretty good boxing section uh, i would recommend people take a look there too right understand you know that what you're reading is real when the author isn't just telling you to take a minus 1000 or a minus 1500 is actually in the props and is talking about hedges or is talking about the fact that the opponent is slick, as McKinson was, and should be able to last a few rounds. Right? Uh, bravo to Graham Houston. Let me just give some quick thoughts here. Uh, Virgil Ortiz, nothing surprised me. He is who you think he is. He has a lot of Joe Lewis in him. Understand, the secret to... Ortiz, because it's obvious that his punching power is not a secret. Pound for pound, he is one of the hardest punchers in all of boxing. Right? Short hooks that he's able to throw with accuracy, precise timing. People are hurt by them. The end of this fight's noteworthy. McKinson gets hit in the body. And folks, it's his leg that gives out. That's how hard Ortiz hits. So McKinson, who looks like he's a gamer, actually is trying to move around the ring, but his corner sees that he's literally operating on one leg. And they throw in the towel. Right? Explosive puncher, explosive body puncher. I don't care what happened in the amateurs. I believe you're kidding yourself if you think a Ryan Garcia 
is on par with Virgil Ortiz. This is the real deal. Let me give some career advice here. <clears throat> At welterweight, there are two guys, two great prospects who are about to explode, right? Understand the old guard, Spence, Crawford, they're clogging things up. For the new guard, Boots, Ennis, right? And Virgil Ortiz. My advice to Boots and Ortiz is don't fight each other. Just don't, unless it's for a title. Right? Target the older guys. I get the feeling that Errol Spence is having problems making weight at 147. I think he's vulnerable. Understand, too, that Crawford Spence fight. Boxing hardcore fans, people who have watched the welterweight division for years, clearly want Spence and Crawford to get it on. Right? But the rest of the public isn't that excited. Right? Understand. If you had a pile of money out there ready to invest in this fight, the fight would have been done by now. Folks, it's August already. It takes time to sell a fight. If the fight was going to happen this year, folks, it would have to close soon. Understand, too, the numbers should be such where one of these guys should be able to say, you know what? If I have to walk away from $500,000 to make this fight happen, I'll go ahead and do it, right? Because understand, the winner of this fight is going to be so glorified that skipping $500,000 now to make the fight happen is going to come back to you in droves, right? Understand, when they talk about your career, if you're the winner of this fight, they're going to say, oh, and of course, he was the winner of the big fight between Crawford and Spence. Right? That, that's the kind of fight that makes careers. That's the kind of fight that validates a fighter. Understand, both Crawford and Spence are unbeaten as I make this video. The winner of the fight would clearly, if there isn't controversy, right, some premature stoppage or... You know, some cut that a cutman can handle, but the ref stops the fight, or the ref in the Rancis Bartholomew fight, the recent fight in, involving Gary Antoine Russell, sees a guy get knocked down, the guy gets up, the guy's following instructions, the ref stops the fight. If the Crawford Spence fight ends legitimately, the winner of that fight is going to be one of the most important people in boxing. Let's not confuse it. He won't be as important as the heavyweight champ, right? Because you understand, there's the heavyweight champ, then there's everyone else. But he'll certainly be very important, right? That fighter could well head to the exit. This fight has a Hagler-Leonard feel to it. But just understand, Hagler-Leonard, that was big money, <laughs> Right. Understand, once Ray Leonard decided, okay, I'm back, I'll fight Marvin Hagler, that fight made itself. There's not as much money. Years later, there's not as much money for this fight. So understand, if Crawford doesn't fight Spence, I believe those are the two guys, quite frankly, that Boots and Virgil Ortiz need to target. Right? Don't face the young lion who's hungry, who hasn't reached the reputation level of a Spencer or a Crawford. No, target the old guy who's made millions, who has silk sheets. Right? Marvin Hagler, as much of a warrior as he was, left the sport at 32. He actually admitted to having some motivational problems. Right here you have, in their 30s, Crawford and Spence, right? This isn't even Crawford's first division, right? You have Crawford and Spence. All I'm saying is, if you're a young guy, don't focus on other young guys, right? Virgil Ortiz right now, right now, 
is ready to take on Spence or Crawford. I think he would beat Spence. I'm just keeping it, you know, 360. Uh, I'm not sure if he beats Crawford, but understand he shares something with Crawford, and you need to realize the water is not that robust, right? There isn't that much difference between the elites and the very good fighters. Understand both Crawford and Ortiz got dropped by Mean Machine, right? So, Virgil Ortiz looks spectacular here, right? He's fighting a guy, and this is really what impressed me in the fight. Not Ortiz, who I expected a level performance from, and that's what I got. But McKinson, right? McKinson makes it hard for Ortiz to find his head. McKinson is a southpaw. They tell you on the telecast he's inverted. His power hand is up front, right? McKinson is so slick with the head movement and hiding his head and moving at an angle where his head's not exposed that Ortiz has to go to McKinson's body. Right? Of course, Virgil Ortiz is one of boxing's best body punchers. Right? But understand, I was looking at Michael McKinson. Now, I don't mean to pick on Ryan Garcia that much. But I'll just tell you what. If McKinson is able to get his leg to start working again and takes time off to let the body shots fall from his body, Right? Because that brother had to be really sore after this fight. Right? I'm guessing he needed help going to the bathroom after this fight. If McKinson can recover fully, keeping in mind that he's a southpaw and Ryan Garcia, even with Joe Goosen, is flat-footed, is unorthodox, is trying to land that left hook. I'm just saying this is exactly the kind of fighter, given the problems Ortiz had hitting him in the head, this is exactly the kind of fighter who can give Orion Garcia problems. Look, I, I believe in the front liners, right? I believe Spence, Crawford, they're fighting for supremacy of the division. I believe both are Hall of Famers today. I don't believe either needs the other to be a first ballot Hall of Famer, right? Spence beat Danny Garcia, for crying out loud. He beat Sean Porter. He beat Ugas. He's been at the top for a long time. And, of course, Crawford, this is Crawford's second act, right? Crawford was undisputed at 140. Crawford beat Khan. Crawford beat Brooke, right? Crawford beat Mean Machine. That means a lot to me. Right? Crawford beat Porter. Stop Porter. That means a lot. Just think to yourself, how many times has Porter been stopped in his career? Right? But, but just to understand, if that fight doesn't get made, and this is different than the heavyweight situation. Years ago with Joshua and Wilder, right there, the money was there. They were arguing over the split. Here at Welter... Folks, the money's not even there, right? Sure, they're arguing over the split. That's what boxers do. But the money's not there. This isn't a heavyweight situation where they're talking about 20 million, 30 million. No, no, no. They're having a hard time coming up with the money for the fight. Bob Arum, Crawford's former promoter, right? a guy who was involved in the Leonard Hagler fight. In the 80s, right? A guy who was involved with a hell of a lot more than that. Understand, Bob Arum feels someone's going to have to subsidize the fight. In that environment, right? If Spence and Crawford don't fight each other, they're going to have to fight Boots or Virgil Ortiz. They're going to have to, right? Google Crawford's quotes where... Someone asked Crawford when he was going to fight Ortiz. And Crawford said, well, I want to see him against Mean Machine first. Right? Well, guess what? He, he fought Mean Machine. 
<laughs> he beat me, machine. Right? I mean, what what's the next lie? Crawford's going to say, oh, I need to see him against Errol Spence first. Right? Understand, too, the old guard is leaving the division. Sean Porter retired. Danny Garcia, he's at 154 right now. Right? So, boxing's a young man's game. Right? Right now, Crawford and Spence have our attention. That's a legendary fight, if they can pull it off. If they can't, I believe Spence leaves the division. Right? If he stays, the water's tough, folks. There isn't that much of a gap between even a Hall of Famer like Spence and a Virgil Ortiz or a Boots Ennis. Right? So I believe at this stage, right, the only reason that Spence and that Crawford are in the game is legacy. They've made a bunch of money. Right? Understand, too, Spence has a more acute problem than that. The man at 154 is his boy, Jamel Charlo. Right? Same trainer, Derek James. Right? So if Spence goes up to 154, what's the point of going up to 154 if you're not going to fight the man? Right? That fight, and I know Spence has said, hey, business is business. Jamel Charlo views it like the Klitschko brothers viewed it. Right? Vitaly and Vladimir ruled the roost at heavyweight for years. They didn't fight each other because they understood that fight would be too emotional. That fight would have too much overhang. Right? You love your sibling and stuff like that. You get in the ring, things get nasty. What's that Thanksgiving dinner two years down the road going to look like? Right? Not worth it. Right? So all I'm saying is target the old man. Right? If I'm Boots, if I'm Ortiz, target the old men. They're the ones who've earned the big reputations. Right? People understand you're, you're taking on the top of the mountain if you say, oh, I'm, I'm not going to fight Virgil Ortiz next. I'm fighting Terrence Crawford. Right? Fans will know that's legitimate. Right? You know what? I'm not fighting Boots next. I'm fighting Errol Spence. Fans will know that's legitimate. Right? You know, don't take on the young lion. It's too early. Here online, we know who Boots Ennis is. We know who Virgil Ortiz is. We know they're two of the best. We know right now it's really their time. Once Crawford and Spence sort things out, Right? The future really belongs to Ennis and Ortiz. Right? The future shouldn't fight the future. The future should fight the present and past. Right? That's my advice to them. Ortiz is ready. The only question with Ortiz is the time he took off. The health concerns. Are those going to return? Right? You need to be aware of that because their fighters, Joe Fraser, fought for years, blind in one eye. Harry Greb, right, dies, they do an autopsy, he's blind in one eye, right? There are fighters out there with lingering injuries who somehow have found a way to get licensed, right? The question with Ortiz is simply, how healthy is he really, right? Let me also say one more thing too. Abner Maris, you're fantastic in the booth. Fantastic. You've been in wars. You're the consummate warrior. Okay. After one detached retina, all right. You know, I cheered for Ray Leonard when he came back, right? You say one detached retina. Okay. Uh, you know, all right, we'll, we'll roll with that. Right. Two detached retinas, come on, player, if you have any money in the bank, right, please reconsider the idea of coming back to the sport, right? I mean, at the end of the day, your body is going to tell you when to quit, 
Too detached, retinas, I believe your body right now is screaming at you. Also, understand the point of boxing is your opponent's trying to go after your weakness. Right? Even guys who don't have a jab are going to come up with a jab against Abner Maris. Right? Let's remember, too, this is a young man's game. I know athletes who get older still think they can handle the young lions. Right? We've seen two many fights in history. Think Joe Lewis, Rocky Marciano, right? We've seen too many fights in history to believe that that's a sure shot winning move, right? For every George Foreman, right, who wins the heavyweight title late, there are countless older guys. Has anyone looked at the films of perhaps the greatest ever, Ray Robinson, when he was older in his career, right? If I'm Abner Maris, let's hope there's some people around him who can tap him on the shoulder and say, come on now, come on now. Two detached retinas, that's too many. Anyway, for a comeback. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Again, Graham Houston, give him a look on BoxingSocial.com. Uh, great call on this fight. Uh, Virgil Ortiz is Virgil Ortiz. He is Secretariat. Uh, Michael McKinson, folks, he's going to give guys problems at 147 pounds. Understand, I know we only had two KOs. You don't have to win by KO. Right? If this guy weren't fighting an accomplished heavy-handed, very heavy-handed body puncher, right, who focuses on defense. If this guy was fighting a more wide-open opponent, he would have had a real chance. As it is, he went deeper in about against Virgil Ortiz than anyone else Ortiz has fought. Right? Pay attention to him if you see him as an opponent, and then if you see crazy odds, like you saw before this fight. And if he's not fighting a Boots Ennis or a Virgil Ortiz again, or a Terrence Crawford or an Errol Spence, right? If he's not fighting those guys and you're getting crazy 10 to 1 odds, 15 to 1 odds, folks, you need to think about it. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.